Hello, I'm Lieutenant General Todd Seminite, 54th Chief of Engineers, and we're on the road again today at the Sioux Lock. We're here with the Detroit District, and uh, I'm here with the Sioux Lock Area Engineer, Kevin. And uh, Kevin, you've been here for quite a while. I want you to tell a little bit about uh, what is the Sioux Lock, what are the Great Lakes Navigation System, and uh, how does this whole thing come together? Right behind us is this massive ship. We spent your uh, last couple hours and saw another ship come to this morning. But explain to the core leaders a little bit about what are the Sioux Locks all about? Well, sir, the, the Sioux Locks are, uh, they take care of a 21 foot uh, elevation drop in the St. Mary's River. That river connects Lake Superior with uh, Lake Huron. Uh, our, our primary purpose here is uh, we provide uh, transportation of uh, raw materials, uh, primarily iron ore, uh, western coal, uh, grain, and stone, uh, traversing from western Lake Superior to all different points of uh, the rest of the lakes and, and overseas as well. Behind us we have a, uh, one of the smaller vessels actually, it's in our MacArthur lock uh, and it's locking through right now, but uh, about 86% of all the tonnage that comes to the facility is restricted to the pole lock, the lock over here to our, our, our left. So MacArthur about 80 wide and then the pole like 110, that takes the bigger ships and that's where most of the iron ore comes through. And I think like 100% of the iron ore that comes in to make steel comes through the pole lock, is that right? That's correct, sir. We have 100% of the iron ore, uh, that uh, all, all the iron ore, ore mined in the United States flows through this facility. Wow, that's amazing. And I was really impressed with your team out here today. I spent four hours walking around and seeing you guys. And Boy, I'm telling you, nobody does a lock like your team here, and you've done uh, an outstanding job, okay? Thank you, sir. So listen, Dennis Chagru is the, uh, uh, the district commander. Dennis, one of the big things here is that this single lock could almost be, uh, I mean, this is a very, very critical lock to the navigation industry. I just met with a lot of the senior leaders from the shipping industry, and they talked about how all of their stuff comes through here. So we're limited, uh, and it looks like it's probably about time to figure out how can we make sure we have a little bit more redundancy or resiliency. So what are the plans for the future of the Sioux Lock? Absolutely, sir. This is my top priority project, hands down, and there's two parts of that. First is keeping a reliable connection between Lake Superior and the Lower Great Lakes. And there's no team better than Kevin yeah. and the crew up here. I've got a dedicated and talented team that keeps this place operational. They have for over 100 years. But the time is here. I think there's a need for a new lock. And we're going through an economic reevaluation that would basically, it'll assess the value to the nation for a new lock the same size of the existing PO. Uh, so that's underway, and we're committed to getting that right. I owe it to you at the end of this year. So there's actually four locks. We've got the two that we talked about, but the other two were taken out of commission a while. Yes, sir. So that new lock will actually take some of that area where the old ones are and then really build that into a, a second 110-foot wide lock, right? That's right, sir. We have in place there uh, the Davis and the Sabin lock built in 1914 and 1919, and we took them out of service in 2010. Uh, the new lock would go in that same footprint where we have the existing infrastructure. And I know that uh, as I talk to Congress, very, very a lot of interest in Congress, a lot of industry, I mean a lot of interest in the industry of continuing to try to find a path forward for this new PO lock, right? Absolutely. Uh, you know, as you've already said, this is critical to the nation. Uh, it's important that we get it right. So I think what's important to our team, not only do we have the greatest engineers in the world out here working every single day to keep this infrastructure up and going, and sometimes we don't really get enough money to give you all the money you need to be able to keep these things going, and you stretch those dollars very, very well. What is also critical for the Corps is to look forward 20, 30, 40 years out. How do we be able to make sure we have that infrastructure that is predicting and projecting where the economy is going to go, and how do we make sure we're building that capability now so when needed, that's already there. And that's what the Corps has got to do. We've got to achieve our vision while at the same time delivering a program. I've been so impressed with what you guys have done out here, Kevin. Thanks for a job well done. You, Dennis, sir. you have a long way to go to be able to get this thing through, but the momentum, the passion is here. All we got to do now is finish this study and continue to give Congress the option of investing here, but I think it's an awful good value and a good value for the nation. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. All right, General Seminite on the road again, out from the Sioux Locks.